<clears throat> okay. So we're starting. Who am I? I'm Milan Radkov. I'm a founder of Hack, which is a blockchain consultancy and development agency. And also I'm part of Eternity uh, ecosystem for, I don't know, quite a lot now. <laughs> I'm uh, also the lead developer of Wallet, which is the browser extension wallet similar to MetaMask for uh, Eternity. And also I'm doing a bit of app development with Sofia recently, so that's why I'm going to be doing this workshop now. First, I believe everyone here knows about blockchain, but uh, let me just go through it quickly. So blockchain is not a new technology. It was actually invented quite long ago, but the first real implementation that got people's attention was the Bitcoin which was created by, by this guy Satoshi Nakamoto. Nobody knows who, who he is, or at least there is no public evidence who he is. Um, blockchain networks use distributed uh, consensus mechanisms and also there is no central point of failure or central point of trust. So people are communicating peer-to-peer -peer and also doing transactions of value or of data. So if you want to transact with somebody, you don't need to contact a bank or central server or something. You only need to broadcast the transaction in the network, the network, and you can basically interact with other participants in the network. Um, all blockchain networks are using some cryptographic uh, mechanisms or functions, and uh, basically every entity or every transaction that happens on the chain has a unique fingerprint, let's say, which is the hash of the whole data, and that's how we can identify and uh, track every unique interaction, transaction, block, or address, or any other entity in the chain. All these transactions are stored on blocks, and that's how, uh, that's why it's named blockchain, because we have a chain of blocks, and each previous block, uh, each, each block handle, uh, possesses the previous block uh, hash, so they're connected, and that's how we are basically creating the whole chain. Each participant in the network possesses the whole um, network, like the whole history of blocks, and is able to verify everything that happened on chain. And basically blockchain solves quite, quite a lot of issues that we have in uh, other systems. Blockchain allows us to do also smart contracts, which uh, started with Ethereum, most likely, initially, and then there are new other platforms that also allows people to create smart contracts, such as Eternity, which basically gives us the w a simple way to code something which will live on the blockchain and basically um, cherish from all the features and everything uh, like trust that offers us uh, from the blockchain network. Which also, the smart contracts allows us to create a decentralized autonomous organizations or basically we can code the whole business logic of an organization via smart contracts and handle every interaction or every level of, uh, let's say, permissions, token flow, and everything in the whole organization via smart contracts, so in a decentralized and trustless way. And also, now we'll be talking about Eternity, and um, more precise, the Sophia language, which uh, is a language allowing us to write smart contracts on Eternity platform. This is a simple smart contract written in Sophia, and I'm gonna quickly explain it. So this is a smart contract which basically only stores a single integer into its state. We have this record state, which is our um, mutable state of, of our smart contract, which we'll be talking a bit later in details 
Also, we have this here, the init function, which is our constructor. We initialize the initial state of the smart contract, and it's called only once while we deploy the contract. So initially, our contract is storing the value of zero in its state, and we have two more functions, which are allowing us to set and get the uh, value of the smart contract state. This function put state is a function that allows us to mutate the state. So as you see in a bit, in Sophia, we have only a restricted mutable state, meaning that we, cannot on, uh, we can only update or mutate the state with this function, which is a security measure and also quite readable. If you read a like, more complex smart contract, you'll be very sure where exactly the state was updated and what was written in it. Sophia offers us to use most of the familiar types we are used to. We have integers, we have addresses, we have booleans, bits, string, lists, and also other um, data types that are mostly maybe familiar from other uh, functional languages, such as tuples. Um, we also have this record, which is a structure where we can create our own custom structure of uh, data. It's an immutable key value store, and we have uh, an easy way to basically create our own object or structure. We have maps, which are similar to mappings in Solidity. They're key value stores. And we have optional types here in uh, Sophia, which allows us to handle value which is non or non-existent, or some which is basically some value is present in this um, variable, let's say. We also have the state type, which holds the whole, holds the, the whole state of the smart contract. And we have the types that are uh, connected to interacting with the chain. We have the transactions. We can see the list of transactions that happened. We have events, signatures, and we have also Oracle um, types, basically allowing us to create an Oracle query or an Oracle entity in the smart contract. You have a question? Yeah, you can ask now. You can access the, yeah, you can access the whole list of transactions within Sophia. You can check a specific transaction if you want. Or you can handle the, the whole, like the, the, the current transaction object, which, yeah, right? Okay, we'll see you later, <laughs> we'll check. Um, also, Sophia offers us to use uh, quite a lot of built-in functions, which are handy. Um, first, we have this map built-in functions. Uh, it allows us to look up a mapping, look up by and, and return a default value, check whether something is a member inside the map, delete some key from the map, or check the size of a map. And these two last very handy built-in functions convert a map to a list or create a map from an existing list, which is very useful. We also have a built-in function on strings. Um, allowing us to concatenate strings, check the length of of certain string, or calculate the the hash of certain string using these uh, cryptographic functions. We have also built-in functions on integers, and uh, here is only one. But the update um, you can check here for more functions in the GitHub repo because Sophia is now um, basically updated almost regularly, and uh, all, fun all new functions can be checked here inside the Eternity Protocol repo. We also have uh, built-in cryptographic primitives, such as uh, SHA-3 or Blake-2B. You can calculate um, the hash of certain 
type that you pass here. This is a representation of a generic, so whatever type you pass here, you can calculate the hash. We have also built-in interface for oracles, which is allowing us to register an oracle, extend the oracle lifetime, or also get a question and respond to the question that, that is being asked. And also the Oracle operator can uh, set a query fee. So if you are running an Oracle, you can basically get some value from it. And you can request users querying your Oracle to pay a certain fee in order to get your answer. We have also interface for account. We can um, spend value to an account with this chain.spend. And also we can check whether an account is payable or if it's a contract, which is not listed here, but it's in the GitHub repo with account dot is payable or account dot is contract. We can check whether we are interacting with an account that is a contract or whether the certain account has the ability to receive funds. We also have these primitives for contract. We can create, uh, we can check whether who is the creator of the smart contract, what is the contract address, and what is the current balance of, a smart, of the smart contract. If somebody sent some A tokens to the contract, we can check it from here. The call um, primitive is the current transaction, so you can check who is the originator of the transaction. You can check who is the caller also. You can check if there is a value passed in the transaction. And also you can check what is the current gas price and what is the amount of gas that is currently left after this uh, call execution. You also have this primitive of the chain. You can access a certain block hash, block number, who, uh, you can check which is the address of the of the base uh, of the coinbase also which is the timestamp of the of the current block the difficulty and also you can check the balance of any other address that you want that is related to the specific function that you want to implement sophia also offers us a easy way to handle mathematical operations which are also safe on the protocol there level because um, we are unable to have overflows or underflows, so we are, we are safe there. Um, if you are familiar with uh, Solidity, there is this function save mat, which is basically, basically created for exactly this, to stop us from doing uh, stupid math mistakes. But here in uh, Sofia, all mathematical operations are safe, and if we happen to have an overflow or underflow, it will result with uh, abortion and an error, so it, it will not allow us to basically proceed further, and the transaction will be reverted. A bit about the lists. These are dynamically sized. Uh, lists which are singly li linked, and um, this is how a list looks like. This is a list of integer. We can have a list of any type that we want. This is the second example is a list of tuples, which basically holds inside an int and string, and also a list, a list of maps. There are two operators that are pretty handy when dealing with lists, the prepend and also the concatenate operators which you can read more about here in GitHub. This is uh, a bit more about the mappings and the records, which I basically told you about. This is a custom structure with the name account, which holds this name, balance, and history with the specific type that we passed. So you can construct your own type or your own custom uh, structure, which is uh, basically handling your needs. Mappings are, as I said, key value pairs. So the only restriction you have here, you can have mapping of anything, but you cannot have mapping and uh, key 
another mapping. So you can have mapping of something, and then in the value you can have another map, but you cannot have another map as a key here. Any other possibility, any other thing that you can imagine is possible here while dealing with maps. Here is an example how we can construct a map and a record with a function. It's basically function, the name of our function, and the return value here is our record. And in the second example, the mapping is similar, but we set the specific key to the specific value that we want. We can access the values of a record and a mapping like this. For the record, is uh, the record name dot the specific field. And for the mapping, we access the specific key with square brackets. And this is how we can get, for example, a balance for a certain account in this mapping. The cool thing about Sophia is it allows us to pass a mapping as a parameter for some function. So it, it can be very flexible while dealing with this. When we want to update values of a record or a mapping, we do it like this with curly brackets and everything else is the same. For the mapping, we set it this key, the new value is this, and for the record, this is the field, we set this to the new value. Um, mappings are also implemented in the virtual machine as a hash maps, so they, that's why they support these fast lookups. And uh, large maps does not increase the gas price for reading or updating. I already show you this for getting the balance of an account. And one, another interesting thing in Sofia is we don't have four loops. Um, for example, in Solidity we do, but that's why we have quite a lot of problems there because in some cases you don't know the length of the, of the thing that you're looping through, so you can easily run out of gas. Here we have recursions, which are very cheap and very flexible. This is pattern matching here, if you're familiar with uh, functional, other functional languages. You can easily create such a function that handles your list of any structure that you want to loop through. As I said, state changing in Sofia is only it can only happen via this put state function, which basically we use like this. We said put state, this is the field in the state, and this is the new value that we want to put in the state. This second example is the same as the first one, but yeah, you can do it like this, or you can um, do a, uh, put a comma and then the, uh, update the next state field. I think it consumes almost the same amount of gas. Philip, what do you think? Yeah. Okay. Even less. Yeah, even less. So, yeah, for readability, it's probably better to use it like this, but it also works fine if you use comma and then put everything you want next. Sophia also offers us an easy way to do cryptographic signature verification via these functions, crypto EC verify and crypto EC verify secp 256k1, which, and also two more which will be included into the Lima fork for EC recovery, which allows us to basically recover the public key of a certain address that is being used for signing a certain message from Ethereum or from Bitcoin. And this is also quite useful when dealing with different blockchains, so you can create a very handy smart contract that is doing some authorization or any other mechanism that involves cryptography. And you can read more in the GitHub repo about it. Yeah, the oracles I already told you about. And this is an example to-do list smart contract, which will be coding now. I'll quickly walk you through it. This is the record 
uh, state which holds our uh, contract state. This is a custom type task which we can basically build however we want. Currently, this has a name of the task and whether it's completed or not. The init function, which initializes the state of the smart contract, and we also have some helper uh, functions here, like getting the count of the tasks, and also a function for adding a new task, completing a task, and also getting the task by index. And yeah, that's for me, thank you. You can visit all of these resources to check everything you want related to Sophia, and you can go here now for the coding challenge. Thanks. So now open it to show you how it looks like. Okay. This is the thing that you will be presented when opening this. It's also available on an easier domain. Let me check. To do dot apps dot tech. So this is a smart contract that you need to fill up. We have uh, created this together with Pivo. Um, you need to basically think of how to implement this to-do list app to create, to store, and to update tasks. And you can check your contract if it compiles correctly. If it is compiling correctly, and if you're um, doing everything according to the to-do explanations here, it will be also generating a UI for you where you can test out your contract and see how exactly it will be looking like in a real, real life decentralized application handling this. So yeah, let's code now. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Or people. So this is uh, deployed on, is deployed on the test net? 